Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, it is a great honor for me to be invited to this conference of the Taiwan Society of Tribology Technology. I represent Technische Universität Berlin, Department of System Dynamics and the Physics of Friction, research and teaching are the main areas of activity of any university and today I would like to speak about both of these areas and on the interrelation between them. As for teaching, I would like to take an aspect which is the central one in my opinion this is the phenomena of understanding. It is clear that we teachers have to ensure that the material which we mediate is properly understood, not only memorized or not only practiced well. But this central point in the learning remains always a mystery. For me, understanding is similar to see. When we understand something, we see suddenly, sometimes the picture, the whole. And it is not at all easy to see what lies in front of your eyes, as Goethe said. I like very much this painting of Max Liebermann famous German Impressionist a painting showing people sitting in a cafe in a one of, at one of Berlin's lakes. When I have guests, we drive to Liebermann's villa and standing in front of this picture, I ask my guests whether they see something strange in this painting normally nobody sees something strange even after attentive study the people are just sitting and talking to each other but the fact is that all the chairs in this picture have no legs <laughs> all these people are sitting in the air and we do not see this very similar sometimes we cannot understand something not because it is complicated, but just because we do not see the solution. The solution is in front of us, but we do not see it. One of the courses which I taught, which I teach at the Tube Berlin, is practically dedicated to the illustration and training of this ability to understand this colloquium advanced mechanics and typical for the tasks of the colloquium is that yeah, these are very difficult tasks which are very easy to solve normally students cannot solve these tasks but not only but only because they do not come to the right idea here is an example two tractors pull with ropes a box. The velocities of the tractors are directed along the ropes and are equal to V1 and V2 and the angle between the ropes is other. What is the velocity of the box and how it is directed? The task sounds trivial. And yet, it is a task which even my scientific collaborators cannot solve immediately. Several years ago, during the morning coffee in a social room, I told about this task and in the afternoon, two of my collaborators came to me and said that I am guilty that they lost half of the day trying to, to solve this 
this concept. And they showed me the solution. And it was wrong. In all these years, only two of collaborators solved this task in sensible time, correctly. And both of them were my former students who took part in the colloquium. It's the first idea which comes to the mind is to sum up the velocities. But at the latest, after considering the special case of parallel ropes and equal velocities, it becomes clear that this idea is completely, completely wrong. So it is a, a really very, very interesting uh, example of, of a trivial. It is, it is for everybody it is clear that the task has a solution. If you pull the box, it should move somewhere. <laughs> and it is, one cannot imagine simpler, and it is not simple at all. But this is a task which is trivial. As soon as you get the correct idea, one just says, ah, and this is a solution. You do not need paper, you do not need pen, because there is nothing to calculate. One only has to, to have the right idea, to understand. This understanding is changing the point of view. Very often, leads also in the history of science to the great discoveries. I take an example of theory of cracks. 1921, Alan Griffiths suggested an idea why material, the strength of materials is much lower than the theoretical one and why it does depend on the size of the mechanical parts. This was a small paper, not, not small, it's no more paper, was beginning of the theory of fracture. But what did Griffiths really done? What does, did he do? He suggested to apply the principle of virtual work to the crack team. He said, if the change of the energy of the system by advances, by small advancement of the tip of the crack is zero, then the tip is in equilibrium. This energy change consists of two parts, relaxation of elastic energy and work of separation of surfaces, one positive, one negative, when they, the absolute values of this mass are equal, then it is in equilibrium. Of course, this is an old principle. It was not invented by Griffiths. It is known since D'Alembert and Leonard Euler in various applications. It's old prince, mechanical principle of equilibrium, and the only which the only new, which was done by Griffiths, <coughs> that he applied it to a crack. And he even did not need to do any complicated calculations, because the change of, of elastic energy due to advancement of crack was known. It was found by English 1911. And the, the work of efficient is true. It is a specific work of adhesion multiplied with the area. So he equated two things which were known at this time and got his famous foundation of the fracture theory. It is the, the real one, you could say, Griffiths did nothing. But of course, this nothing. All genius is simple. Nothing, this nothing, is the real advancement of the science. 1971. 50 years later, Johnson, Kendall, and Roberts published their very famous paper, one of the most cited papers in contact mechanics, about adhesion of parabolic body. They write that their approach 
is the same as that of Griffiths. In reality, what they understood is that the adhesive problem, the problem of adhesive contact, is equivalent to the Griffiths to the Griffiths crack. The only difference is that crack is normally inside the body and the, the adhesive yeah, is outside. <coughs> they apply the same principle of energy balance. In the same way, they use other equations for elastic energy because of other configuration. But this, this, they were not invented by Johnson, Kendall and Roberts. They come from Paris, 1882, and Putinesk, 1884. They all ingredients were known, as a matter of fact, in 1922. In 1922, Griffiths, if he would like, if he came over here, if he did need to solve the contact problem, he could do this at once, because the only thing which did Johnson, Campbell and Roberts they, they understood the equivalence, the exact equivalence of these two problems. And it took 50 years for this small advancement. But this is not the end of the theory of adhesion. <coughs> One of the most popular, most effective at the present methods for simulation of numerical simulation of contacts is the boundary element and we have we have the possibility to simulate adhesive contacts with boundary element methods only since 2015 2015 was suggested an idea how to implement in boundary element method the adhesive contacts Two scientists suggested to use as a criterion for detachment the Griffiths criterion. It is so simple that I would like to explain this. In the boundary element method, in each iteration, the iterative method, in each iteration, it is calculated the distribution of stress. So you, you have numerical net cells, numerical cells, and in each cell you know the stress. If it is, and then in, this, in each iteration step it is decided if the bodies in this cell are still in contact or the contact is detached. If it is non-adhesive contact, it is very simple. Pressure must be positive. Pressure cannot become negative. As soon as it becomes negative, the, the bodies are detached. But if you have adhesive contact, then the pressure can be negative. And we have to define some criterion for detachment of, of this, of the elements of the body. So the suggestion was to use Griffith criterion. If you have some stress, oh it is uh, not correct, so it is always better to use on computer. <laughs> The equations are not correctly because if it is sigma, the stress here, and you say this element is detached, so that the stress becomes zero, then some elastic energy is relaxed. This elastic energy, which is relaxed, can be calculated analytically. It is square square of this the stress, and depending on the size of the of the cell. This, this, this can be calculated and can be known. And if this elastic energy is equal to the work of adhesion, specific of adhesion uh, times the area of the element, then it will detach. And this gives some this simple criterion reproduce exactly all known solutions for adhesive contact. And the time for calculation does not change. The time for calculation of adhesive contact takes exactly the same time. There is, there is no change. There is only a, one different criterion for the death. Not zero, but, but non-zero. Non so it is 
44 years to, to, to implement the same idea as GKR in the numerical procedure. Here, just a small example how it looks with numerically in comparison with the theoretical curve, curves of O. One can, of course, with this calculate complicated Okay, any, any complicated here for example some left handed stamp in the shape of Mary Poppins how it is detached starts here to the corners then the umbrella and the head and this is the last configuration after that it's become and if it is some complicated rough service it is, it is of course possible with, with this simple criterion, which is just Griffiths, pure Griffiths, without any addition. Now, the question is, what does it really mean, changing the point? How, how one can change the point? Are there any rules? How we have to see, to look at the, at the things, to, to understand them? Uh, one of the rules is or the one of the keys is the parametrization. Many success stories in science is the changing parameters, the change parametrization. For example, let's take finite element method. It won its position of the numerical method number one in the modern science and engineering. Due to parameterization, flexible parameterization connected directly to the node variables, while the nodes can be placed arbitrarily. These two cases make it universal tool. Fourier analysis is extremely widespread, or more generally, um, <coughs> modal analysis. The secret of this parameterization is that the system of, in, of interrelated degrees of freedom is replaced by a system of independent degrees of freedom. Some integral with differential equations are replaced by algebraic equations. Correct parameterization allows very often a drastic reduction of the model. One just can guess the correct, the correct shape and then and just omit all other degrees of freedom which we do not need. And as a matter of fact, the secret of any modeling is reduction. It is a reduction as Michelangelo Bonarotti, the famous artist, said uh, to get the correct model, we just have to omit all necessary, all unnecessary. And then we have the ideal model of the reality. The only question is how to decide what is unnecessary. <laughs> Born already, Michelangelo could it, but um, there are several ideas. For example, Einstein said that the models should be as simple as possible, but not simple. It is very, very interesting idea, uh, which but, but, what, what, one does not know what does it mean, correct? The author or co-author of the method of dimensionality detection, which I will speak about a couple of words, uh, Marcus Hess, reformulated it as simple as possible, yet exact. In reality, one can often make change the parameterization in such a way that, that we omit some information and this, the, the, the solution remains exact. The art is to to omit the information which we do not need in any case. I would like to illustrate this with contact mechanics. The typical regular formulation of contact mechanics is based on the fundamental solution. Fundamental solution is displacement of the body, of the surface of the body, under the action of concentrated force. Vertical displacement is given by this equation, it's proportional to force, inversely, inversely proportional to the polar radius in, in the contact plane. And of course, if you have stress distribution, one can calculate it 
as an integral. Because any stress distribution can be represented as, a, as many concentrated forces. But this is not the only. This, is, this gives the, the classical formula. This, this equation is what all contact mechanisms solve in some way. But this is not the only possibility. Any stress distribution can also be, be represented as a Fourier series. So we can consider as a basic functions, not concentrated functions, but, but periodic functions. And then we have the, we have the relation between stresses and, and, the, and the displacement, not in the integral, but in the algebraic form, which is much easier. And these are two poss possible basic functions, so to say, and there are infinitely large number of any other, and all possible basic functions are, are correct. The, the only question is what, what are sensible, and there is one parameterization, which is especially simple and interesting, and which is applicable in different situations, but especially simple if we have axially symmetric context. Um, for axially symmetric context, one can describe every indentation as a series of indentations by cylinders. And this parameterization, the superposition of cylinder indentation, leads to the formulation which is known as method of dimensionality reduction. Method of dimensional reduction takes a special space in the series of uh, contact mechanical methods because it is so simple. It is simple, it is available for everybody. It is available for, stu for undergraduate students in the first semester of study. They, they only need integral and derivatives, nothing more. I say a couple of words about this uh, method because it is its history also, also illustration of how the people do not see what uh, lies in front of the eyes. It was developed 2005-2015 in this present form, but in reality the, the underlying equations were already found 1942 by Schubert in Germany. Reinvented independently, 1945 by Gallist in Russia. You see the years, of course, they did not collaborate. Later, they were found independently by Green and Serna. But then Snellen translated the book of Gallen into English and published it, and later he wrote 1965 his famous paper. And since then, this solution is known as Snellen's solution. In reality, it is, of course, Schubert's solution. But, but the, this is just the history. 1998, Jaeger found a new reinterpretation of these equations. Exactly this indentation of, of the cylinders of different radios, and finally it was formulated as the method of dimensionality reduction. It took, as you see, 71 years just for the same. Generations of contact mechanisms have solved and solved and solved and published and published the results which were completely known 1942 with Schubert solution. And even now, it is not at all known and applicable. So it is just not seeing what lies in front of your eyes. What does method of dimensionality reduction? It is considered some three-dimensional contact and maps it onto one-dimensional one. There are two steps. First, the shape 
of the three-dimensional body is replaced to another one and the air transformed and the elastic foundation elastic elastic foundation elastic three-dimensional space is replaced by elastic foundation with some defined stiffnesses now if this transformed shape is pressed into elastic foundation then the dependencies of the force indentation and the contact radius are exactly the same as in three-dimensional case and the same if we make viscoelastic body and the same if we took uh, and it is not restricted to, uh, to axosymmetric uh, uh, each body of any complicated has an equivalent uh, and the air transform profile which compact in compact form uh, has all the information about the contact properties. All aspects of interface physics and dynamics are described with this elegant, simple pocket edition of the contact mechanics. famous philosopher Spinoza <coughs> in his ethics distinguished three types of knowledge fragmentary empirical knowledge the lowest level systematic abstract abstract scientific study and the highest one, intuitive knowledge. This is, which comes, yeah, is very similar to what I mean under understanding, true understanding, seeing what lies in front of your eyes. And he writes, the largest endeavor of the mind and the highest virtue is to understand things by this third kind of knowledge. From this third kind of knowledge, arises the highest possible mental harmony. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us achieve this highest harmony by seeing what lies in front of our eyes. Thank you.